Crazy Camp Life, Votes and Tribals, the life of a survivor is more than you see on TV. So if you need the scoop on Ireland survival, crack a coconut, put on some rice, and let's spill the immunity. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am here with Alex today. Brandon is on the road somewhere, so we wish him safe travels. And Gina, I think, is coming back next week to join us in the studio. I'm so excited. Um, Wow. (laughs) It's been a week. It's been a week of surprises. We've lost some, we lost some fan favorites, at least one of my fan favorites. We crowned a winner. We said goodbye to, I think, a player we completely expected to go home. There's a, there's so much to talk about today. I wanted to let everybody know today we are sponsored by The Great Discovery. We are going to be sharing a little bit about that halfway through this, just a quick 30-second break. Uh, but we're excited to have a, a sponsor for the show, so that's it's a it's kind of a big deal for us. So, uh, Hi, Alex. Hey, <laughs> hey Brie. I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Yeah, we're talking about the season finale of Survivor Australia, Titans versus Rebels. And then I think we're on what, episode three of Survivor 46? I think we're on episode four. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, because there was one. uh, Somebody got kicked. Yeah. So episode four of Survivor 46, America. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I know. They're starting to fly by. It's so confusing. And now as we say goodbye to Survivor Australia for the, till next season, I mean, it's going to it's going to take our workload down a bit. Right. I have a tendency to like I was so excited to watch these. I could not wait for Australia to come out. And I it's so there's so much, but I like they start to mash together because we get them three at a time. Do you right. think that Survivor the United States version would do better if they put more out in a week or is that, is the one 90 minute episode just right? I I'm kind of on the fence. I I like more survivor, but when they're both going on at the same time, it's like, this is a lot of survivor. I'm not, I'm not complaining, but it is a lot of survivor to watch. Um, I don't think I can't think of another show in America. I mean, you have these Netflix kind of shows that come out on a weekly basis or they launch three episodes at once. Um, But I don't know if the American audience could watch three episodes per week and keep track of all of that. Maybe it's just an Australian thing. So, I I mean, I would love to see more Australian or American Survivor, but especially with them shortening it. Right. The the reason that they can do that on Australian Survivor, because it's like 50 days long. You know, 47. It's, yeah, it's a 47. lot. I mean, it's a lot. There's a lot of yeah. stuff. They they start with more people. Um, so it's a lot tougher to get to the end. Uh, yeah. A lot tougher challenges. It's a much longer for a, for a lot less money. Um, but they're in it to win it for the title. Uh, the money is just a bonus. So it's exciting. I mean, it's been it, it's been crazy. I think the only other show there is a show Big Brother, you know, plays three days a week um all summer long but there's not a lot else on tv during that time we're we're in the summertime so uh you know we'll see i see dale's here hi dale and yeah we'll uh, have to have our australian hey hey johanna we'll have to have our um you know our australian resident you know our australian expert come in and say why do they is this normal do they always do this for tv shows do australians just really love binge watching television it was nice like you know after you get off of your work day because it's month it's sunday monday tuesday it's like oh i got a new episode of survivor like that's such a uh stress reliever for me i can just really zone out and get into the show so i kind of liked it because you know we work super hard and then we're like okay now we can really tune out and just watch our favorite show you know four times a week that's that was pretty nice yeah it definitely was really nice i mean i think that they do that in australia and maybe the uk i've seen when traders uk came out there was a few episodes a week so mm-hmm. i'm thinking that that's just us americans make which is so funny because we are such an instantaneous like nation like we want everything immediate we want to have like 
we don't want to wait for anything. And so right. that's where I think Netflix and some of these other places really like they would drop a whole season. Right. And you can watch right. it you can binge it. That was binge watching became a thing, but the right. networks never got into that. They're like, Nope, we want, it's a Wednesday. That's the time you spend with us. We're sticking to that. I yeah. wonder if that'll shift at all. Well, but for, it seems like it's just, it's, they're staying true to that. Well, they want to push you to their streaming app, you know, and then there's like the live TV and the live TV is usually an upcharge versus like the normal streaming. And a lot of the other streaming platforms, they don't have a live element. And so I think that's kind of the one differentiate is they still have to, you know, capitulate to the CBS, you know, schedule. Yep. You know, in Australia, there's probably not as much quality television as here in America. Oh man, I'm gonna get those Australians I, all wrong. Oh no, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's great. We love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Australians are scary, man. They're buff. They're gonna come beat you know. Um, so I don't know. I think it's probably because they do have to work within the CBS schedule too, right? And now we Absolutely. have Amazing Race on too, and we got Top Chefs. We're watching Top Chefs, so you know, lot lots of TV. I, have, I know Top Chef's on Bravo, but yeah, but it's, only, I know, it's yeah. Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin. I know. From they're Madison. talking they're about like, wow. Madison and all these yeah. things and how Madison has the best farmer's market. Anyway, we yeah. digress. Um, we digress. So let's get into episode four of season 46. Can I just say that I had a moment, I had a moment in the beginning of that episode where I was so beyond happy with production i wanted to go up and give them all a big smooch i was like thank you for giving me this and i'll tell you what it is okay. it was the background music they played for soda and tevin when soda was singing at camp they were gonna maybe get fish or they were gonna get a food reward and she was so uh, so excited she broke out into song tevin was like coming in with some of the, the rhythmic stuff, you know, doing some of the drums or whatever he was doing. And Survivor was like, let me put some, let me put some music to this. Yeah. And there was some interesting music on this episode. Yeah. I was so happy for that. Yeah. I loved it. Mm. Hunter. Well, was I noticed during the challenge, they had like this, da, 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 da. they had some like Ben music in there. They had some like Metallica <laughs> going, right? going on. Yeah, I was just I was there for that. I like it. Please do more of that kind of thing. That just made my day because like it's fun, right? Like be a little playful, have a little fun. Give us these these light, like these beautiful light moments. And and I just thought it was really, really cool. I loved it. I know there's probably people that were like, oh, come on. Right. This mm -hmm. is this is not glee. We're not like it's not a musical, but I just thought it was really I just thought it was really cool. I had to mention it. Do you have like a highlight from this episode that that was like, oh, I really just like the way they did that? Um, I don't know if anything particularly stood out. I mean, I did like that they, you know, Bono, 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 Bono. Banu got to share his story and, uh, you know, he was content with that and he, you know, it wasn't a, a tragedy for him. It was, you know, he had got to have a good moment and to share a story and the story is super powerful. And um, I like Banu a lot. And so I, I, I like that they gave him his swan song and I hope he feels, um, you know, good about his time because I think he did win a lot of people and, and shared his story. And I think people can maybe really sympathize with, um, him and and relate to him even a lot. Um, but glad he's gone, honestly, because he wasn't really, he's not really made for Survivor. You know, he's not, he's just too nice. He's just, it's just not the game for him. Um, it is I thought, not the game. I thought Q coaching him, I was like, oh, that was very sweet and very nice. Is Q actually a coach? I mean, does he do this? I know he's a, he used to be a football player, but maybe he's just, he's but I thought player. that was very nice too of, of Q really, you know, um, Kenzie said it. She's like, you have the patience of a God with, with us. Yes. With God. So, yeah. yeah, I'm sure he does. I mean, once you play football, once you're an athlete like that, you stay in the athletic community. Yeah. Ivan's here watching. Hi, Ivan. Good to see you. And he can probably pipe in on that. I think that, you know, there definitely is. There's something about that, that mindset and that way they do things that I, I think definitely would continue on. He's used to being coached. He understands it at a high, a level, like a high level athlete. Like that, I think that, you know, 
you, you, you know, the mindset that you need to go into things and you know how to help people and lift them up. If he's a good player, he should have been doing that as a leader, maybe on his team. I don't, I don't know. I'm guessing at that, but that's just what I see. And I thought yeah. he did really, really well, but it was time for Bono to go. I want to yeah. call him Bono instead of Banu. Um, no insult to him, but it was a no for me. So oh. <laughs> it was I definitely you're trying no to call him like Bono. I was like, what does he have to do with you too? No, uh, it's, it's Bon. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bon, no. He just he made way too many mistakes, and he just didn't. He just didn't have what I love to call situation awareness. Uh, he doesn't have it. He that's something. And, and Q has that right. Athlete, they when you're a high level athlete, you have situation awareness, um, and so he doesn't have that. And that was his demise. And he was like, did I say too much? And here's the thing, you know, he was talking to them on Yanu. He was talking and he was saying to, T was it Tiffany and Q? Did I say too much? Like you didn't even have, even if you did say those things and you realize your mistake, shut your mouth and don't tell your tribe that you said those things. Like he could have just been like, okay, oh, I should not have said that. Note to self, don't say things like that. And then maybe don't tell anyone that you did say all those things because he basically made a mistake, realized he made a mistake and then made more mistakes by, you know, right. telling everybody I made a mistake. Right. Oh, was that yeah. bad? It was just that kept spiraling like, and spiraling. Just and kept, one, it just yeah. was, that hole was 40 yeah. feet deep by the time he was done. I'd say the other kind of highlight was the Mariah jumping compilation. Oh my gosh, I know. What is it? I mean, bless her heart. Geez, like nobody, she never grew up jump. I just don't even understand how that happens. How do you grow up and you don't know how to jump? She has no vertical. But she had, I mean, maybe it was all a lie, but she had some pretty good jumps on the challenge. So maybe she was. Well, she was jumping off a platform. She, she didn't really need to get any air when she was just jumping on the ground. She like, right. I don't think she cleared a half inch off the ground. She has no vertical, but that's okay. I mean. Bless her heart, right? That's Bless her heart. That's right. That's right. That's what my grandma <laughs> she, always would say. Bless her heart. Right. She's out there trying. Yeah, she's out um, there trying. But I, I mean, she, she did okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think, I don't think that the the first challenge Maria was really right. Like she really struggled with that, right. and I was like, she's just she. She was holding the ring straight out in front of her and trying right. to throw it up. And I'm like, is no one going to tell her to bend her knees and go from the lower? Yeah, lower it's like, you got to you got to go, you gotta from, you gotta go full crouch it. position and then go all the way up. She's just like. Yeah, know, I know. Like, over and sorry over to again. Emory, but like, yeah, I mean, bend your knees and then use all your force. So that was kind of weird because I was thinking, oh, she's going to be a really strong kind of competitor. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe she doesn't have a coordination. Yeah, um, and then she gets fit. They get they win fish. Yeah, Yanu finally mm -hmm. wins something. Yeah, they were so elated and so excited. They, and they really right. like they did spank the other teams, right? It was mm -hmm. there was they were far and away up above the, of the other teams on that particular challenge. And Q really came through. He was pretty proud of himself. Like he came through that time. Um, I don't think in the in the immunity challenge, he he didn't fail that. He came from a very last place position and gave them an opportunity to win. So I don't think that he like, like let his team down by his performance. I don't think we saw that either, but like he was so hard on himself because he really thought the last time that he should have won that, but he let his team down. He let, and so, but this time I think that he got them as far as he could with with the well, Bono screwed up and didn't go off the crates and had to swim back, and that they lost precious time with that. So, um, you know, yeah. and then it looked like he had no clue what he was doing in the water either when it came to yeah. retrieving the the buoy that they had to throw into the net. So yeah. I liked. Okay, so I have to. Ask, I liked that they put the. They weren't throwing from the dock. Mm -hmm. I like that they were throwing from a, a plat, an unstable platform to give it, yeah. to make it a little more challenging. And uh, Hunter, this guy's like Jonathan, smart Jonathan. I mean, this guy's like very, very, very good. Maybe one of the best. I mean, if he continues on the street, he'll be one of the best challenge, you know, performers of all time. So 
Hunter was pretty impressive again. That was it, yeah. even Tevin called. He's like, put that ball in his hand, and he, you know, it's over. And then three shots in a row. I was like, geez, this guy's some. This guy's insane. Yes, but what kind of target are we putting on ourselves? Hunter needs yeah. to be careful because well, he was Tevin. outstanding. Yeah, he's with Tevin, who's a big target too. And so yes. they're kind of both each other's shields in a way. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, we did see some stuff earlier in the episode about uh, the the no soda diet that we're gonna that they want to go on. Uh, they're looking. I I know I'm full of all kinds of fun stuff today. This is how that, I yeah. write myself notes. <laughs> I wrote no soda diet. Bah no. Okay. Um, <laughs> but soda is is really her mistake was running around and talking to people. Uh, a little too right. much cementing those bonds uh, and it does get noticed. And so you have to be careful what you're doing at camp, but Tevin, like I thought soda and Tevin would go a little ways, but definitely I don't think that's going to happen. I think she'll be first out on that. If given the opportunity. Yeah. They may not lose though with uh Hunter, you know, they might just never lose it. I, I imagine they'll probably do a tribe swap. That's the what next. I'm They'll probably merge. They'll probably split. Q and Kenzie up. Kenzie will go to another tribe. Bon, you know, so I think that's probably what's going to happen. Um, yeah, and then yeah, the soda, the soda decision kind of surprised me too, but it makes sense from Tevin's point of view. She is maybe more likable and outgoing and personable than than he is in a, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. So and and Hunter too is with him wanting to detach that relationship, you know, so the benefits very smart. I agree soda because then soda is not close to Tevin, even though, and, but even though Tevin and soda, like Tevin's like not sure of her because of the way she's playing. Like they're both, they're both quirky, right? Tevin may be a little bit more grating or having a problem with people because you either like them or you hate them kind of a, you, sure. you either really appreciate that or you don't. Um, I get that. I understand that personality. I love that personality because I'm going to love the guy. And and if you don't like him, it's too bad for you. But um, Soda is bridging the, her gap. Maybe her music or her whatever is a little grating on people, but she's really f focusing on getting those personal relationships with people and like really strengthening them. And that's so obvious to, to Tevin and Hunter that I think right. we're going to, I think that's, so it was a good, it's good for Tevin's game to get rid of soda. It's good for Hunter's game to get rid of soda and Tevin and Hunter could be a great duo that would, you know, if they can stay together through a tribe swap, which I think we'll see, I think that's going to come to pass probably next week. Um, they, it, the only reason I say that is it's so hard to sit that many people out of a challenge, right? So right. now you're looking at half of a tribe being sat um, at a challenge, which it really doesn't work very well. And it limits what the challenges can be because you don't have, you can, you know, with some of these challenges, there's components. So some people do this and some people do that. And then, and so if they've got these things planned out, they're going to be like, well, we have to do a tribe swap to make, to make these challenges work. Right. So that we can do them all. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, I think it'd be really, really, it'd be interesting to see where Q and Tiffany and Kenzie go. If they get completely split amongst themselves, I think their, their games might be over um, because of the Bono, you know, spillage. <laughs> yeah. Talk about spilling the Jeez. tea. Bonnie, yeah, they're gonna be they're not gonna be so nice to Bono here. after they see this episode <laughs> or after they watch the season. They're like, we were too nice as I completely ruined our game. Um, Johanna says in Malcolm and Denise season, they didn't wait until it was just the two left before the tribe swap. Yeah, I think they did. I, I mean, it's possible we didn't see a tribe swap on the preview for the next episode, and they might allow Tiffany, Q, and Kenzie to go at it. And that would be an interesting tribe if they did lose again. I can't imagine that they would lose again. They're it's weird because they're all three strong competitors. Yes, you know, but in Banu, he was a big guy, strong guy, athletic. No reason that he should have been, you know, bad at challenges. He just kind of, you know, kind of a goof. But um, so it's weird that they you know, have performed so poorly because they're not, you know, lummoxes, you could say. They're not like 
you know, non-athletic or not, you know, they're pretty good competitors. So it is weird that Mm -hmm. they have gone on such a losing streak. Yeah. I think Kenzie goes, if we, uh, if we, if they, we see Yanu go back to tribal, they don't do a tribe swap. We see Yanu go back to tribal. I think they're going to get rid of Kenzie. I think you and Tiffany are tight enough that they're going to be like, we, that that's our vote. We have, unless, you know, I don't know if she rolls her, you know, shot in the dark. Tiffany has, yeah. Tiffany has an idol too, right? Yes, she does. Yeah. So Tiffany has an idol. I don't think she'd play it. I feel like she's pretty confident in her relationship with Q. Yeah. Um, but Kenzie knows about the idol. So that kind of puts her in a tough spot where she's like, oh, well, we probably can't go for Kenzie in this situation. So, you know, so can she even team up with Q at that point? Not really. No. And so Tiffany's, I, I think- don't think Tiffany would vote off Q. I think Q might vote off Tiffany, but not the other way around. Exactly. Yeah, I think they're I think Tiff, I think Kenzie will go if that's the situation. I hope we see a tribe swap. I much prefer that. I love to see how they scramble and get through things um and try to find their way because it does shake up all of the alliances and everything that you have going on and it and new things come into play. So it makes it a lot more interesting as you see that dynamic fall like come to pass. But all in all, I thought it was a, you know, I thought it was a pretty good episode. It wasn't like top episode for me, but it wasn't like a really low episode. Right. I do have to say Jem did re like she did hide everything again and move things around. And yeah. I liked that she kind of stayed back and let them. And then it was like kind of pushing it on Ben. Isn't it on Ben Tim. and on Tim? He pushed, she pushed it, pushed it on Tim. Cause Tim was really, digging down deep on the roots and she was saying, Oh, he's overcompensating. Right. Oh, that's very smart. You know, he's a, he's a kind of a very big term, right? Um, yeah. she surprised me. I mean, she's very kind of meek and, and, you know, plays a very kind of quiet game, but she's really playing and she could be, uh, kind of a surprise, right? Very low key game and very likable too. And seems to be in with the right people. She's on, you know, the tribe with Ben and Charlie and Maria and Mariah and Tim. Okay. So, and her main connection was with Mariah. You know, they kind of yeah. got that little, that little nerdy girl type of relationship. The you know, nerdy girl. Connection. Yeah. I think it's a good connection. I, I like, I'm interested to see how it goes. I really hope we get a tribe swap. They didn't say we were, but doesn't mean that they won't. Right. Mm-hmm. So we'll yeah. see what they did. I felt like the preview for next week was very short. Like mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot to it. So I felt like maybe they they're, they couldn't show much because we are in a tribe swap. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But I think if we don't get a tribe swap, uh, I don't see Yanu winning again, really. And uh, it's going to be, it, it, for my pick, it would be Kenzie. What, who, who do you think would go? I don't know. I feel like Tiffany. I don't know why, but I feel like Tiffany. I feel like you would feel like Mackenzie could be a little bit more crafty and get in with people. She is just so, you know, she's very, very good at, I think this game. Um, But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Tiffany having the idol really confuses things and that might make it. So, so they want to target Tiffany, you know? And so Q might say she has an idol that makes her more of a threat. He already kind of sees her as a threat. So they should team up and blindside her. It's possible. It's possible. The other thing that I was thinking with that is because of Banu's tea that he spilled and they think that Q and Tiffany are this, this pair, if he shows it it could play both better for both uh, Q and Kenzie, if they do get rid of Tiffany, because then it'll make what Banu was saying, maybe not very reliable and question so is it Q that's the mastermind? Is it Kenzie? Is it Tiffany? Is that why they got rid of Tiffany? And they could play that off in that direction. So that would actually be a smart move for Q and Kenzie to get rid of Tiffany. I think you have to still keep Q around because he brings so much to the table with his athleticism and his awareness. And he's also a great game player. So I think we shall see how that turns out. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, he's just so competitive, too. You know, he like is. he 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 won that challenge. And he's like, I told you I would I would make it up. I told yep. you. And he's really, you know, really focused on winning. You know, and he really, you know, if that doesn't happen for him. And that's, uh, you know, having that hunger and that drive and, and survivor and really wanting to win that bad. You know, we could, you know, maybe move this into Ferris. You know, Ferris 
wanted to win so bad, you know, so, so bad. And so that's, I think, a really important part. And you see other people who don't, they just, oh, okay, you know, they, they quit yeah. or they give up or they roll over and you know, stop well, looking for the good. idol, lay yeah. down in the middle of the trail and say, why, God, why? Why did you that was me funny. here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah was I probably, funny. it was funny because I'm like, I probably would have that moment. I probably would do oh, that totally. at some point if I was on Survivor. Like, why? I'd be doing that the entire time. I always say this. I'd be on the beach. I'd be completely <laughs> bitten by mosquitoes. I just like, blah, 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 you know, and then people would have to like drag me into the challenge, prop me up. Cause yep. I'd be. Weekend of dehydrated burnings. lips all chat. Yeah, weekend of burnings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good segue to get us into Australian Survivor. We had a lot of things going on with it, um, but we want to take a second here to talk a little bit about the great discovery, our sponsor today. And uh, Alex, I'll let you go ahead and give that a go. Sure. Yeah. If you get the screen share, let me know. It's up. We are ready okay. to rock and roll. So if you are a course creator, if you're looking to create a course, you might have looked at some of these platforms before. Circle, Thrivecart, Kajabi, Go High Level, Skillshare, School. All of these are okay platforms, but, but what we are doing is something called The Great Discovery. And this is probably the best platform for course creators in 2024 and beyond. And the reason is because one, it does allow you to host courses. It gives you amazing training and resources to help you create your courses, but it also actually gives you access to sell your course to a global audience by translating your course into over a hundred different languages. And so you can actually sell courses in China, in Chinese, and they have dynamic pricing, which will change the price of your course based upon the local economy and what they can afford. So this really opens up the entire world for course creators. You can sell to all 8 billion people on the planet and it's all done through the great discovery. The other great benefit is that you get paid on every single course that um, your customer buys after they buy your course. So let's say they buy your course and then they go buy five other courses on the platform that aren't even yours. You get paid lifetime affiliate commissions on your customers. And the other great part is that they also help you sell your courses through an army of affiliates. So the great discovery is made for course creators who are looking to leverage affiliate marketing and affiliate network to sell and promote their course. So that is the great discovery, a brief overview. If you're interested in learning more, we'll put some links down below this video, but definitely a big shout out to the great discovery. It's a great course hosting platform and we hope that you join us on there. I love it. Thank you, Alex. I know we're so excited. I'm thrilled to be part of that as well. And uh, Alex and I are building a, a team together. So if you want to be part of it, join our team, you get all of our support, which is pretty exciting. Uh, it's kind of a level up. So if you need help building a course, even, you know, we see that so many times where people get like, oh, I can put my course on there, but now I have to build the course and I don't know how to do it. We're here to yeah. help you get that done as well. So, um, all right. Well, here we are going into our last, this is the last time we get to talk about this season of, of Australian Survivor. I'm kind of sad. It was yeah. a tough, it was really tough to like say goodbye to some of my favorite people this, the last three episodes. Um, yep. Before we talk about our, our brilliant winner, and I do like the winner. Um, yep, me too. We said goodbye to my favorite Kirby. I was so sad. I know you weren't. That's okay. Wah, wah, I know. Uh, I loved Kirby. I loved her game. I loved the expertise that she brought. She was in command pretty much the entire game. But like we say, it to truly win Survivor, you have to outwit, outplay, outlast. And she was unable to do that. Um, just because the cards weren't in her favor. And her last hope was Ferris. And, you know, smartly, he did not play his idol for her and she went home. That's, I think yeah. that was a smart move on fair. I don't like it, but it was smart. Well, he won. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. So, yeah, I definitely the right move to vote out Kirby. Um, I didn't think it had to be so kind of, emo you know, he's very theatrical. He is. And he has this, I'm not going to miss his kind of, uh, he talks very slow. He talks with a lot of um, pauses yes. and emphasis. And JLP, um, this is, I have to stand up for myself for once. I'm like, oh my God, dude, get on with it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I do like Ferris a lot. Definitely a deserving winner. 
in a unanimous vote, you don't see that very often. A 100% no, unanimous vote for Ferris. Even Kitty. Caroline's like, you know, ride or die through the entire thing and didn't even vote for Caroline. So, and I, I think Caroline, you know, can accept that. And, you know, Caroline should be proud. I mean, I don't think Caroline stood up for herself as much as she could have in the end. You know, I'm the oldest woman out here. I'm 55. I had a lot of control over this game, you know. Um, you know, she did a lot of things in the game. And I don't think she did the best job. I don't think Ferris maybe did the best job either on the final, final tribal. He he kind of lost his confidence when the Kirby thing happened and he kind of started devaluing. He kind of lost this kind of cocky attitude about things. I wish he kind of would have kept that. Um, but yeah, I thought he was very deserving and um, I will miss the season. And and I just think, what what would happen if he didn't? If he didn't get, get out so early, how would the game have changed? Because that was my pick. Um, and none of us picked Ferris, which he us. just seemed a little Mark. bit too... He just seemed a little bit too obvious to win in some ways. Like, I thought know. his obnoxiousness would get him kicked off a lot earlier. Yeah. And I did it. I think the reason that we saw Ferris, there were some key things that Ferris did. And I sure. and I wish he had said this in mm -hmm. like, first of all, working with, with Ray was like that was really, really important. I think the bond that those two had really carried him through because. Raymond would go pretty much wherever the wind blew with whatever Ferris said, right? If we go this way, Raymond's like, sure, let's go that way. You know, whatever Ferris was telling him to do. So he was like controlling two votes at all times. And right. then he also like took the moment to say, all right, Kirby is my opponent. She is my big, the my biggest target. I know that that like she has the ability to win, but then he also knew when to suck it up and be like, if I can turn the tides and play with Kirby, that'll get me a lot farther. So he was really fully aware of yeah. how nav navigating this game, I think, together. Um, he knew that that would take him a long way and then knew when to cut the cord at the right time to say goodbye to her. And yeah. so, and she, she, I think she saw it coming. She knew she had to win that immunity challenge. She completely missed the mark, dropping the ball um, way too soon. And there was no recovery. It was just, they were just in that challenge. They were just yeah. close enough. I really like that challenge too. Yeah. I do. It's it's very similar to the American version of it, but this is the old school where you're literally running up the stairs and running back down and running up a st and it's exhausting and you really have to you have to nail that timing. Ferris was on that. He was like counting and counting I mean, and counting. Yep. Um, but I think, you know, with Kirby not winning that, she kind of knew the gig is up. She could have tried maybe a little bit more with with Carolyn and Mark. I don't know. Because Carolyn already wrote Ferris's name down. So, like, I think, but he did have the idol. So it kind of was a moot point. Um, yeah. So it was, well, I it mean, was it a really tough was. Break. We talked about this, you know, in the previous. It was like Ferris was in a really tough spot. If he took Kirby, she was likely going to win the challenge. She'd probably not take him because it wouldn't be smart for her. She, you know, she's pretty ruthless. If Ferris didn't take Kirby, well, neither Mark or Caroline would take him. You know, and so he was, I mean, he went into that final challenge having to win. Yes. And he pulled it off and he won. And I really like the challenge. I always like the ones where they have to like basically be in a crucifix or like, you know, the endurance challenges where they really got to, you know, just endure. And like it goes into the nighttime and the heat. And I, I always love those challenges. This is my favorite. And uh, to see him win, I was, I was pretty surprised. I thought, wow, this is going to be a really long battle between him and Mark. But I, I think Mark cramped up pretty bad it looked like his back like spasmed and he just couldn't oh know. and his feet were killing him listen yeah. i have this is one thing i have to point out because this sure. the, like these little details drive me crazy when i watch something so they want you to feel like they've been on these things forever yeah. but at the hour mark we already he's like you've been here for an hour Dusk was already starting to fall. Right. So they right. started this challenge really late so that right. it would go from sunshine to darkness in a right. relatively quick amount of time just to make right. it feel like 
they've been up here all day and it's like even though right. he's giving us the time you know what i mean it's just it just gives that appearance well, i recall of, some of the track where it was like 12 hours or like it was like six at least right they were like up there for like a really long time then production was like we don't have enough tape for this we gotta like you know, we gotta like uh you know make these a little bit more challenging instead of just like holding on to the idol right so right yeah, yeah. and who's gonna step out make the mistake what release do you their hand what do you think of them having the family members there for the final challenge and for the final reading of the votes? Cause they don't do the reunion. What do you think about that? I, I don't, I didn't need the family members there while they were yeah. doing the final challenge. I thought that here's my, where, okay. What if they had to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Did they feed them? What happened? I don't know. These are all the things I, the, the dumbest thoughts go through my head when I see sure. like something random like that happen. So I'm like, I mean, it was really cool to have them there, but I would love to see it earlier in the season for like, you know what I mean? Like, like Survivor US used to do when they would bring the families right. in and stuff. Um, and I would love to say, and if, if I, I would give that up to have a little bit of a reunion, like I really wanted some questions answered. Yeah. And so I guess if I was going to give something up, I would have given that up to like have, cause I love having them at the, at the, when they, you know, give them the crown and they read the votes and all of that stuff. I think it's great to have your family there. Of course you want to celebrate, right? right? But I yeah. also would love to see a little bit of a reunion, some questions. If that's the way you're going to roll it, then it would have been nice to get that, that fresh, like, why did you vote that way? Or I, my question was if Kirby and Ferris were in the end, who, who would you, cause then it would obviously right. not been unanimous. We would have seen yep. like, where would your votes had got, have gone? Yep. Um, because I think Ferris doesn't, didn't want to sit next to Kirby a hundred percent when she called yeah. him out on that. And that was the thing you said, he changed his, like his whole, his whole attitude changed after that is when Kirby said, you were afraid to sit next to me. Right. Even though right. we had agreed to go to final, you agreed, you were too afraid to sit next to me because you knew I could beat you. And he and answered he that because he asked that again. And he said, and this was the correct response. I wasn't afraid, but it was just a smarter decision to go with somebody else. And that's right. true. You know, hundred um, percent. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say too? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like you get three episodes where like nobody's voted off. And then the final episode, you cram all this stuff in there and you don't get a reunion. It's like, okay, we get three episodes on the most banal, you know, not important stuff. And then the finale, we get like a 30 minute, you know, and uh, Jaden didn't get to ask a question. You know, I know. And he maybe didn't have a question or anything, but I like when everybody gets their time to say their thing. Um, and yeah, they weren't as mean as I thought, but it was pretty much just because it was a unanimous, unanimous decision, you know, for Ferris. Um, so I thought they were going to dig in a little bit more into Caroline and, you know, Alex had a lot of harsh things to say about her. Of You didn't play a game and, you know, they just kind of brushed Caroline off. And when she said, oh, you know, my big move was, trying to play my idol and I played it unsuccessfully, you know, right. A failed like, move. And we just saw that, right. Was we well, she saw did a lot that of other in, things, you know, she did do yeah. some things, but we saw, yeah. we saw that with, uh, you know, the U S in 45, yeah. right. Yeah. We kept seeing Jake make mistake after mistake, right. He was trying yeah. and you don't get, you know, you really don't get, you get no points. <laughs> Yeah, I tried. Well, I, go to, go I to a football it, game and say, "But I tried to get in the end zone." Oh, we'll right. throw you a point. No, they won't. Right, you're you the best player mean? ever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't yeah. win you anything, Carolyn. And I think here's my thought: Do you think that yeah. Val got in her head when Val said that few, like five, six, seven episodes ago, when she said, oh, yeah. "I am going to get rid of the most undeserving player, the player that does not belong here." And that was Carolyn and she was calling her out. I, yeah. I think that really, really got to uh, Carolyn. I don't think she forgot that for so well, something happened. I think happened. that made her um, want to find that idol and then not tell Mark and Kitty. If she told Mark and Kitty, that could have swayed it. They could have played the idol successfully, you know? So I think that did get in her head and psyched herself out. And she was overcompensating for the lack of play, maybe trying to play a little bit too much and not, thinking it because she's like it needs to come all down to me i need to do you know i need to be the person i'm not going to tell anybody it's going to be the caroline move and but it didn't turn out because you didn't kind of coordinate with your team so i think that did get in her head totally um yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. She, she lost it. She didn't do a very good final tribal. She didn't state her case. Um, I, I thought she, you know, and, and I don't think the questions were setting her up to do well, very well, but I think she could have turned them. I think she has life experience enough that she should have been able to like turn them a little bit, but she kind of came across a little defeated. And like you said, yeah. Jaden didn't ask anything. There was somebody else that didn't ask anything. And I don't I know if Re did. I think Rihanna, she, I don't know if she, maybe she did. I can't did Raymond. I don't think Raymond, he just confirmed some information. I thought that was like one of, you know, like when I look at Ferris's game versus Kirby's game, Ferris did so many actual more moves than Kirby. Kirby never played an idol. I don't believe. Yeah. I mean, who did she after the merge? What was her big move? Yeah. She was in control of the game, maybe from a feel standpoint, but what were her actual moves? True. You know, she like Jaden, her, you know, got voted off. Um, Re got voted off. Who did she protect? What did she do? She won. Yeah, she's and yeah, she won. Sure, you know, but like, yeah, yeah, they don't even value like immunity wins unless it's like the last one or a fire making challenge. So you know, this idea that Kirby's the queen or Kirby's this. Yeah, she's a very good player. She's very influential. She has a lot of influence over people. She's really good at the big smile and and lying and um, getting people on her side. But I don't. I, I'm having a hard time pointing to like. Ferris had the idol for 30 days. He tricked Mark and Mark actually voted for him because he's like, that was a genius play. He tricked Mark into thinking that Raymond found the idol and it was just the idol that Ferris had. That was you know, really genius on his yeah. part. He I was really, one, really like that. He was the one who called, who switched the vote at the last minute um, when they were, I forget who they were trying to vote off, but they were going to blindside one of the people on Rebels and Ferris got the vibe and he was the one who called it out and say, Hey, everybody dump your votes. I think it was on Alex. Yep. Right. So, but yeah, I think Eileen yeah. helped him with that. And I think he did, you know, and she did bring up at final, you know, you should have listened to me a little sure. bit more. And I think yeah. he should have, but I yeah, think, totally. we, I, I don't know. I, I think it all played out to be fairly, you know, a good, a good season for Ferris. I do think Kirby did a great job. I think, you know, she lost it at the end uh, because she wasn't ready to make the right decisions. Um, but I still love her. I think she would be a great returning player. I'd love to see her and Ferris back again. I don't know if there's anybody else on that that I would love to see come back. Um, I did hear before we move. Actually, let me before we move into like our final thoughts on this. I wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about Raymond because that fire making challenge broke my heart. Yeah. I felt for that guy. He could not make fire to save his life. And he's such a likable character. He was such a great, I think he gave great contribution to the overall experience of survivor for the people there. And for the people watching, um, because he was quirky, he was different. He had his own style and bless his Wait, heart his a game. lot of yeah. times, but he was just, he, he just looks like a really great, like I'd want to be friends with him. I, yeah. you know, he'd be a pal for life kind of a thing. Yeah. He just seems like a good friend. Um, really. Yeah. Nice guy. I thought he would do better in the fire making challenge because he is what a gamer. I? You know, he's a gamer. He, he's, you know, he should be a little bit more, you would think competitive and have a little bit more hand eye coordination skills. And at the beginning he was doing pretty well. And then he has a, I don't know. You see, you saw it at some of the challenges. Sometimes he just kind of throws his hands up and, it, and uh, you know what? I'm not super into that. You know, when he was looking for the idol, that was one of my favorite moments in the season. Yeah. Um, Hurricane Kelly was like, Hey, you should look for an idol for me. And he's like, okay. And then she walks away and he like kicks a couple of rocks and he's just like, he throws his hands up, sits down and you know, <laughs> stops looking. So, um, and he does own one of the, greatest kind of survival trickaroos, you know, deceptions with the, uh, I'm not good. He wasn't good. good. <laughs> you know, so he really, you know, he gets the not good award, um, but he, but, but very good. Right. Yeah. Very good. So um, he's very good at being not good. So I see that. I do really like Raymond, but he shouldn't come back. <laughs> yeah. He shouldn't come back. And it was funny. He's, he's like, um, looking forward to using a uh, one, uh, five thousandths of your winning to buy me lunch. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was, you know, it was time for Raymond to go. 
Uh, I really didn't want to see Carolyn sitting at the end. I just didn't think she deserved that spot. I would rather have seen Mark there. I think the final tribal would have been a lot more interesting had Mark, yeah. you know, been there. But he really screwed up when he threw Ferris under the bus earlier, where he was just yes. like, yes, like I thought he about that too. Toasted him, and right. I was like, nope, you're, you know, you just lost. You nice lost it. Play there, Mark. Yeah. 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 The guy who's probably going to beat you tomorrow. Let's really insult him. Yeah. Or let's really say like, uh, you know, yeah. So that wasn't a very wise move by Mark. He probably should have ingratiated himself a little bit more, but I don't think anything he probably could have said could have changed the Caroline, um, you know, taking Caroline to the end, unless he didn't win. Right. I don't know if Mark could have compelled him, but you know, Mark. I but Mark honestly played a worse game than Caroline. He he was the Charlie Brown. Everything he tried to do, the ball just got taken out from under him, and he was never able to pull it together. Yeah. You know, I think he's a really smart guy. I think you know he wanted to play a really good game, but he honestly had a weaker resume than Caroline. He did so, but he's just a better talker, and so it was it was smart for Ferris to not to take him, but um, because he's he is a diplomat. He is a diplomat. Did, I was um, waiting for that, but I'm a diplomat, like Kelly yes. did with I'm a psychologist. I'm <laughs> wow. like, okay. That's her. Yeah. I'm a librarian from the yeah. money. That's her, like, <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> she was crazy. Um, Kelly did give us good moments. I thought overall it was a great season. Uh, mm -hmm. it kept me entertained. There was a lot of yep. great people in it. Um, and it was, you know, it was a great finale. I loved I thought seeing Ferris pull that out and staying up on that wheel of torture um, was, was brilliant. Uh, I don't know why they had the fire ring going or just for dramatic, I suppose, uh, make I like it look, that. look scarier, but uh, I was just thinking. It was really like a very, you know, hellish, like landscape, you know, on the crucifix. The you know. rocks oh, was, really we, sharp we say this behind too. them. It was the Ferris wheel. That yes. was very funny. The that Ferris was, wheel. That was it. right. <laughs> so I thought, you know, overall it was, it was a great season. Now I have to ask the question. I've seen this question come up and it really, really like, I don't, I can't agree with it. Ever, I've heard many people say that this season was as good, if not better than last season. No, not even. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> you're all wrong. wrong i'm gonna you're say you're all... <laughs> sorry to inform you all it wasn't um last season was way better last yeah. season was way better there was way more twists they had the 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 core three you know they had um what they call them shoni and, and liz shiz. the shiz and king george <laughs> you know ferris did i think ferris did a pretty good job narrating but i just really didn't like how he lost his confidence King yeah. George never lost his resolve. King George never lost his confidence. He never was defeated. He never was down. And that probably comes from his profession. You know, he's he's kind of like a diplomat. He's a um, he works in politics, right? Yeah. And that's what that's kind of what disappointed me. And so I think Ferris, he's not he's he's up there with King George. You know, as and he's you could say he's better than King George because he won. And King George didn't win. But as far as like an orator and, and driving it and making it very entertaining television, you know, King George, Liz, Not the Sean, look. they, yeah. Whatever yeah. that, whatever that look he gave all the time. Yeah. George, King George, I mean, way more, gave us so much more continuous content. Like he was just in it like a hundred percent. It had nothing to do with the, the money at the end, he just wanted to entertain. And King yeah. George did that spectacularly. Ferris gave us a lot and he won and, and I, and good on him. Just like Kirby said, good on him. Uh, I agree with that, but I just, he wasn't, he's not at that King George level when it comes to great TV. Obviously he won. So he did a great, job but yeah um it wasn't it wasn't as as entertaining shall we say um yeah. but it, you know he might have won an academy award you never know it could happen yeah he didn't touch on that as much as i thought he was very proud of that move and he really didn't touch on it very much and it was a you know it was a very good move on his part johanna says raymond would have won the sea of money totally totally yeah maybe i wonder if win raymond that. is a fan favorite because he you know, a lot of people i could see a lot of people maybe not liking him because they're like 
who's this? He doesn't care enough, right? He's not taking it seriously, you know, um, that type of thing. You know, some people might not find him endearing and likable, but I agree. He should have won the CM money. He was definitely the most likable on the season. I thought he was I, adorable. I, I liked him yeah. coming in in jury too, because he was so excited and he was yeah. so, he it was like when he saw Ferris with that, uh, with the immunity necklace on him. Yeah. He was yeah. so, like, just, he was so happy for his friend and, and yeah, it, he just has this, this sweet, even though he was devious, which I think is the new age villain. Like, I love that Australia will let you be a villain and they will embrace the villain. And we're, we're just too, I don't, the words that yeah. come to my mind, I can't say on TV. So, but, but we can't like, oh, villains are so bad and we don't want villains. But I think like right. survivor villains, it's a certain thing, right? We need the Johnny Fair plays and we need the, the, you know, the, the Sandra Diaz twines. And of course, Boston Rob, I love, they're lovable villains. They are like right. devious, but you love it. And they're doing all the things that you're like, oh, you just want that to be because it's, you have to have that. It can't all be kumbaya. You have no show. If everybody's right. just happy, go lucky and getting along and aren't we great. And we're singing around the campfire all the time. We need the deviousness. We need some of the, we need. Like, come on, it's for a million dollars. Yeah. Do do yeah. what you gotta do. Bottom right. line, you just met these people. Right. 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 You yeah, don't make the Austin home. mistake. Yep. So yep. Yeah. Um the the villain things, it, it's the you're right. It's like a deviousness, it's this Cheshire grin. And I love you so much and it's all good vibes, but you know, it's just a very different type of villain play. But Jeff was saying this, you know, they've, during the pandemic, they, they attracted a much younger audience. And you saw this on the Australia or on the American survivor episode when Ben was kind of consoling um, Maria, you know, and, and, and helping her kind of process and, and, you know, they're really making it about the story of overcoming. Right. And that, everybody has their kind of hero's journey and you can kind of speed that up through survivor and you yep. can go through a lot of personal development and, and overcome a lot of these, you know, traumas or whatever they call it. Right. So Australia, it's really not a lot about the story, right? You didn't really hear too much about anybody's story. I mean, do you know anything about Jaden? Do you know anything about Valeria's story? Not a I lot. Mean, no. Right. I mean, Valeria has got a pretty crazy story. I mean, from Russia, you know, and, you know, but you never hear that on American Survivor. They really dive deep into their personal background and who they are and how do they grow up and what are their challenges. Right. And, on, you know, you, again, Raymond, what what's Raymond like back home? What's his job? You know, you never hear anything. So I think it's just a different. Um, yeah, maybe maybe it's because there is this younger generation. So they're trying these kind of more kind of comical editing styles and different types of challenges and different storylines. Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah. the audience. What you play to the audience, right. and that's what they want. But as normal, no one is ever happy with Survivor. Uh, there's always people saying, "If you do this, it'll be so much better." And then they were to do that, and then they're still bitching about it. It just doesn't seem to make anybody is not everybody. You're never going to make everybody happy. That's what happens. Uh, for all of you super fans of Survivor Australia, Ferris has joined the tribe. Has spoken. He uh, it was announced yesterday. So if you are a fan of Australian Survivor and you want to connect uh, a bit with some of the players. Head over to Facebook and look up The Tribe Has Spoken 2.0. We love that group. We are in there and active. And the admins in there are absolutely outstanding. And you're going to have a lot of fun and get to know a little bit of background on a lot of people. So I wanted to give them a shout out. They've been very kind to us and let us post things in there. And uh, and we found some great guests from there as well. We found Brandon, who was, uh, who was not here today, but uh, he was a, a super fan in The Tribe of Spoken. And that's how we connected. And he got to be a co-host on the show, which we love. Uh, a little, little tidbit. I am watching Deal or No Deal Island with Rob Mariano. And he I've is killing it over yeah. there. And there's a player over there. Her name is Amy. 
and uh, talk about doing them dirty. She, uh, she will tell you, I love to play games with my kids and I don't let them win just to be nice. They need to know that the world is a tough place and they have to earn what they get. And I'll wow. leave that. I'll leave that there Thanks, for everybody. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, interesting, a different take on how the games are played uh, from that island to another island with uh, the banker. It's a, a little different over there, and they're a little more cutthroat and don't mind being villains. And Rob is in his element doing things that he is just amazing at doing. So uh, if you need a little Rob fix, head over to Deal or No Deal Island. It is on Peacock. We are not sponsored by Peacock, but we will be soon, I hope. <laughs> Oh man, what a fun season of Australia. What was your favorite favorite thing from the whole season? I was gonna ask you the same thing. I was gonna ask you the yeah. same thing. Great month. Um to that's right. Let's see. Um I I liked I liked Jaden the challenge beast. I think Raymond's moment was really good. And uh, you know, I always just like all the I always like when they bring out the toasties. This will be our last toasties for a while, guys. Toasties, yay! So I always like when they bring out the toasties. Um, and I, you know, I'm just always happy when somebody who is deserving wins. When it's somebody who I feel like, oh, they didn't deserve to win, it kind of spoils the whole season. So I'm just happy that Ferris won. Um, you know, that somebody who you know wasn't like two people like, how did they get here? Right? They just kind of lucked out. Or so I'm I'm happy to see Ferris win. We'll call him Ferris Wheel now. Ferris Winna. Um, well, never mind. Winna was already a character. So I liked, uh, those are some of my highlights, I guess. What about yours? Um, I think for me, I love a really good story. I love, I love, a, a, you know, I want to see a battle between great players. And I think I got that this season between mm -hmm. Ferris and Kirby. I saw them go at it in the beginning and they were both worthy opponents. They came at each other. Things changed. They adapted. They came back together and together were very strong for a while. And then when it came down to it, um, you know, we see that a lot. If the, you know, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of a thing. And so when it came time at the end to say, okay, gloves are off. We are now, uh, we've, we've cleared the field and it's us, you know, we're, we're against each other. Um, even though it wasn't stated that way, it was great to see Ferris say at the end, when it comes time and I need to take you out, I will take you out. Um, and he did that and that got him the win. I think personally taking Kirby out was the winning thing that he needed. Um, and then that final immunity challenge, of course, but, uh, I love the, to see that. That was the Liz voting off King George, you know, moment. Yes. Liz and Shawnee voting off King George. I also just thought that the Garrick vote off was, was really fun too. Cause that was oh, the yeah. first time that Kirby really pulled the wool over Ferris's eyes. And you know, there was that contention. I, I thought that was a pretty, pretty good tribal too. So, but yeah, I, I agree. Like when you, when you, the two people really go at it, you have these two Titans. I know they're both rebels, but when you have these two Titans of survivor go at it and, and, and um, be two big threats the entire time. That's cool to see. So, yep. Well, before we wrap it up for today, I got one thing left to say. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of, of American players head down to Australia to play the game down there with the Aussies in the tough, in the hard to play Australian survivor. And they're all, you know, oh, we got to get these Americans out. We saw Nina, we saw Sander, we saw Russell. Uh, we've seen people head down that way. Um, it's time that we see a few of you Aussies come on up here and try your hand at our survivor. So stop calling us out. Why don't you apply? Jeff says it every week. Come on and apply. So why don't you head on up here and apply? We'd love to see how you do over here. Uh, but right now we're going to get into 46 episode five next week. Be here. We will be live every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Thanks for joining us. Big thanks to great discovery. If you want more information, check it out in the description and we will see you guys next week. Bye everybody.